Here's more wrestling news for October 26, 2022. And we're starting off this afternoon with Randy Orton, who has been out of action since May with a serious back injury. Since then, there's been no sighting of the former world champion on WWE TV, and that may, unfortunately, be permanent. Speaking to Steve Fall of NBC Sports Boston this week, Kofi Kingston was asked for his dream Survivor Series team and mentioned the Viper. While discussing Orton, who has a history for impressive Survivor Series appearances, Kingston let it slip that he's not sure if Randy will ever be back in the ring. I don't know if Randy Orton's coming back, but I'd put Randy on my team, you know, the Viper and the experience factor. In his two decades on WWE's main roster, Orton has been no stranger to injuries, ranging from broken collarbones to herniated discs, and like many wrestlers, has suffered the dreaded concussion. It was around the time of his 20th anniversary in WWE that Orton said he'd love to wrestle for at least another 10 years, but with reports that he's expected out for the remainder of the year, we can only hope that the third generation superstar hasn't already had his final ever match. During this week's Raw, Nikki Cross made her return to TV and has ditched her superhero persona of Nikki A.S.H. Cross closed out the show by laying out both Damage Control and Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair and has quickly inserted herself into the title picture. Cross has made an impact, but one person who may not be thrilled to see her back is her former partner Dewdrop, who tweeted that her fellow Scott looks like a member of the Backstreet Boys. Nikki and Dewdrop had been a tag team, even challenging for the women's tag team titles, but after a string of losses, decided to go their separate ways. Nikki Cross may have done well this week, but it'll now be on WWE to keep her momentum going, so we'll have to see if this return culminates in a second Raw Women's title reign. Now in a split second, a day at the beach can go from a day of fun to a day of horror. That was nearly the case for a family in September of 2021, had it not been for the heroics of Al Snow. The situation occurred at a Santa Rosa beach in Destin, Florida. Snow heard someone yelling for help, and when he looked around, he saw a young boy being pummeled by waves while simultaneously being pulled out to sea by a rip current. Speaking to the A to the K wrestling show, Snow said, I was just in the right place at the right time, and I believe anyone would have done the same thing. He was paddling, trying to make it back to shore, and it was as if a rope had been tied to his ankle and as it was just pulling him out. Though he had to make up a lot of distance, the WWE alumnus jumped into action and got the boy in time. Thank God I caught him, said Snow. I mean, literally caught him by the wrist because I knew if I hadn't caught him at that point, he was gone. He was going to be well past where anybody could have got to him. As Snow pulled the boy in, a rip current caught them as a wave came over the top. At the moment, Snow thought they were both going to be swept out. Thank God I dug my feet in and was able to push forward out of the pool of the rip current, said Snow, who was able to pass the boy off to the lifeguard. Great work indeed by the former WWE wrestler. Comment down below to let us know your thoughts on Ale Snow's heroic act of saving the life of a child, and just send some love to the real-life hero. Speaking of returns, it was only a few weeks ago that Candice LeRae returned to WWE, joining her husband Johnny Gargano on the Raw roster. Both in NXT and on Raw, LeRae has been working with Triple H, and one idea the head of creative is reportedly implementing is giving superstars more creative freedom and fewer scripted promos. Speaking this week on Legion of Raw, former WWE head writer Vince Russo gave his opinion on a recent interview between LeRae and Kathy Kelly and made it clear he's not a fan. Russo even said that if this promo wasn't scripted, LeRae came across as heavily scripted and said that if this promo was off the cuff, then she needs a lot of work. Russo's ire wasn't just reserved to Candice though, as he's also criticized the entire backstage segment with damage control, saying no one there could grab the attention of viewers. Of course, this is just Russo's opinion, and there's plenty of fans who have enjoyed both LeRae and Damage Control so far, but according to the infamous writer, Triple H has his work cut out. We've got some sad news now as NXT star Robert Stone has announced that his mother has passed away. Stone, known as Robbie E in Impact Wrestling, made the announcement public on Twitter, saying his mom died after a brief battle with pancreatic cancer. Calling her the best mother in the world, Stone added that his mom was his world and his best friend, and was always willing to help anyone who asked. 
Losing a parent is never easy, but it is something the vast majority of people will have to go through, and we're offering our truly deepest condolences to Robert and his family at this time. Over the past two years, Tessa Blanchard wrestled just one match, as accusations of racism and bullying continue to haunt the third-generation wrestler. It was in January 2020 that these allegations came out, and while she was announced for the WOW Women of Wrestling promotion, Blanchard has since been released from the all-female company. This week, Blanchard sat down with Sports Kita to address her future, and while she didn't rule out an in-ring return, she's not jumping out the opportunity to get back in the ring. The first ever female Impact World Champion explained that she doesn't want to compromise her current happiness for anything, not for money, popularity, or followers. Speaking about life outside of the ring, Blanchard explained that she's currently focusing on her education and is studying international affairs at the University of Texas in San Antonio. While Blanchard said she plans to do one or two wrestling appearances a month, it's been quite some time since she stepped between the ropes, and her days in the ring may indeed already be over. It was in February that WWE announced their newest show, NXT Level Up, which is sort of a developmental program for WWE's developmental show, NXT. Young superstars are given the chance to hone their skills on Level Up before going to NXT, and later the main roster, and there was a debut at the most recent tapings. During last night's tapings at the Performance Center, Jacquera James made her in-ring debut, squaring off with Chase Hughes, Thea Hall. NXT Level Up airs Fridays on Peacock in the States and WWE Network elsewhere, and perhaps Jacquera James will be WWE's next breakout superstar. Earlier this year, it was reported that a film about the legendary Von Erich family is in the works, with The Greatest Showman star Zac Efron attached. Efron will be playing the role of Kevin Von Erich, the last surviving son of family patriarch Fritz, and the actor has undergone a dramatic transformation. In photos snapped by the Daily Mail, Efron was spotted wearing a towel and rocked a tan and bowl style wig, just like the WWE Hall of Famer. The film, titled The Iron Claw, will be a drama based on the life of the Von Erichs and their patriarch Fritz, and detail the many successes and tragedies the family faced. It's worth mentioning that the Von Erich family around today will have no involvement in the project, but the already jacked Efron has gotten himself into even better shape for his role. During last night's NXT, Nikita Lyons and Zoe Stark failed to capture the NXT women's tag titles, but only after a controversial call and the match being restarted. The challengers had the match won when Stark rolled up Katana Chance for the win, but the ref had missed a tag and the second ref restarted the match. On Twitter, fans expressed their delight at the match, which saw Chance and Caden Carter win, with some praising the legitimate tag team offense the champions have been using. The match was a fantastic way to open NXT, and after this controversial finish, we doubt it'll be the last time the two teams face off. Speaking of NXT, yet another main roster superstar will be around next week, as R-Truth will be facing Grayson Waller. Truth appeared this week in a segment with Waller and new North American champion Wes Lee, and the self-proclaimed face of NXT will have an opportunity to face the WWE veteran next week. It's been reported that the investigation into the AEW All Out fight is wrapping up, and that Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks are expected back on TV soon. The Elite hasn't been spotted on TV since the fight, and not everyone is thrilled at the idea of them coming back. On Twitter, some fans suggested that it just Omega should be back, while others suggested that none should want to return, given Tony Khan was trying to strike a deal with CM Punk, which some fans have said was Khan's attempt to throw them under the bus. From the start, it was believed that the Elite would return to AEW, as all reports have said that it was Punk who instigated the fight and threw the first punch. But what Khan will have for Omega and the Bucks when they return remains to be seen. And we're ending with more from AEW, as J.D. Drake recently claimed that Josh Briggs and Angelo Dawkins have been ripping off his moves. During a recent appearance on the Punch-Out! podcast, Drake claimed that Briggs had used his move in NXT, but said it's actually made him smile when he did it. Speaking about Dawkins, Drake claimed that the silencer is a move he came up with first, but insisted that it doesn't bother him seeing others use his moves. It's impossible to truly determine who used the moves first, and if Dawkins or Briggs deliberately took the moves from Drake, but the AEW star is sticking to his claims. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. 
Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.